Hello everybody, welcome to my video, Moving Stress-Free, Top 5 Affordable and Creative Tips and Tricks. The last time you saw me in a video, I was doing a check-in, what am I up to type video, where I told you guys some of the upcoming video series I was going to do, and then what was going on in my personal life. Well, since that video, which wasn't very long ago, which I'll link to here, so much has changed. My husband and I finally decided to take a leap of faith and move from Southern California to the Charlotte area of North Carolina to be closer to my side of the family. This was a huge decision that we gave ourselves a month to figure out. And we're actually moving May 4th. You can follow my journey on Twitter. I'll put the link here and at the end of this video. So it inspired me to create this video for you. My husband and I have moved quite a bit over the years and we've learned a few tips and tricks. And of course, being a creative person that I am, I've also put some of my creativity towards making moving stress-free. And I thought I would share my top five ideas with you. So let's go over a quick overview of what those top five are going to be in the video. They are number one, start yesterday. Number two, downsize. Number three, replace the boxes. Four, replace bubble wrap. And five, stay healthy. So let's start with number one, start yesterday. Like I said, my husband and I gave ourselves a month to move our entire lives from the west coast of the country to the east coast of the country. It is totally doable, whether you're moving down the street or into a new apartment or across the world, it is doable. But the trick is, is to start the moment you've decided to move. Start packing and don't wait to the last minute. If you're one of those that work well under pressure, this would not be the time to test that theory. Definitely start the moment you've decided to move, if only packing a few boxes a day. My second tip for you is a three process step. It is to downsize. And the three ways to do that are to sell, donate, and trash. Selling is really important, especially if you're moving long distances. You may have spent a great deal on a particular item, say a couch for instance, but if you do the math and calculate how long you've had that couch and how much it's going to cost to move that particular couch, you may just find out that selling it for an affordable price and pocketing that money and purchasing a new couch in your new location may be the best option, not to mention it is so much easier to move with less baggage than with more. So you definitely want to downsize. This is also a great opportunity to get rid of all of that unwanted clutter in your life. Since you're starting fresh in a new home, you want to be at the best you can possibly be and not take things that don't improve your life and the lifestyle that you're trying to achieve with your move. The second thing that you can do while downsizing is to donate. This is a great opportunity to get rid of those things that aren't selling as easily, but to not be wasteful and trash those particular items. For me, donating is one of the funnest things to do because it's less stressful than having to sell items, but I still get the gratification that these particular items are going to a good home. One thing that I've really noticed is that when you're moving, those little things start to add up. If you look in the picture, you'll see all of my little bathroom tchotchkes is what we'll call them. Those are those little samples of products or say a deodorant that comes with your perfume kit that you never wanted to use. Or if you're like me, you collect those little shampoo and conditioner bottles at hotel rooms. Well, those are the things you probably don't wanna take with you to the next house because they start to add up. Boxes are pricey and you don't wanna fill these boxes with all these little things that aren't necessary to give you the best lifestyle you're looking for in the next move. So one of the ways that I like to get rid of those smaller things is to donate them. We'll use the little picture as an example. I plan on taking all of these little samples and hygiene products and putting them into Ziploc bags, adding a granola bar, a few dollars of affirmation or a prayer, and then handing them out to someone less fortunate, someone homeless that I see on my comings and goings or someone down and out. It is a great way to help someone that's homeless versus just giving them the couple of dollars that you can afford. And it's also a great way of not being wasteful with the things that you have. And then last but not least is the trash. Last and least favorite, but sometimes it is doable. 
For instance, because we're moving across country, we will not be taking our mattress. It's an extremely old mattress and it's well past its lifespan and it's definitely not worth the money to move it, taking up the valuable space that I will need in the container that we are moving. So since you can't sell a mattress and it's not worth donating because it, it really is at its trash level at this point, you can trash it. And here in California, at least in Southern California, and I'm sure maybe where you are in parts of the country that you're at, you can contact your local waste management facility and ask them if they do large pickups. Because of course you don't wanna dump large items like that and litter, like dumping your mattress out in the desert, that's a no-no. You definitely want to dispose of these items properly. And one way to do that is to contact your waste management facility and ask them for assistance. For me here in Orange County, California, where I live, we are allowed two large free item pickups a year, which means they will come and pick up my mattress and trash it for me, which is fantastic because I don't have to go out of my way and it's free. The next step is where I really get excited because it's where my creativity comes in. So everyone knows if you've moved that those boxes are really expensive. Now there's already tips and tricks you may know like going to a grocery store and, ask, and asking for boxes or going on places like Craigslist and finding people who have just recently moved and are giving their boxes away for free or at a really cheap rate. Those are fantastic. And sometimes you have to weigh are those efforts worth your time or would you rather just spend full retail value and purchase your moving boxes at say a UPS? For me, there's another option and that's getting creative with your containers that you're using to move your items from one place to another. Three of those ideas include a suitcase. If you have extra suitcases, they are perfect ways to move not just clothes, but anything in your home that'll fit. Another great thing, especially since you've downsized, you may notice that those really nice containers that you have, say for Christmas ornaments or garage storage, you'll notice that they start to empty out. You might even have one or two that's completely empty because you've taken the time to downsize. What you could do is using those containers, like the second picture seen here, which is a Rubbermaid container, use those Rubbermaid containers or any container that you already have that's empty from your downsizing to add items that you're going to be moving and use it as a box. The other great thing is to use items like laundry baskets or decorative baskets, any container that will hold something you can use to transfer your items that you're gonna move from one place to another. They do not have to be the traditional UPS packing box. Get creative with your storage items and it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of money. My next tip, tip number four, is to replace the bubble wrap. Again, get creative. Of course, as a crafter, and probably in your household, even if you're not a crafter, you most likely have some tissue paper laying around, say from birthday parties or other gifts that you may have. And for me as a crafter, I always have tissue paper. So one thing that I've used my tissue paper for is to pack my small items that I don't want to get lost, damaged, or tangled, like jewelry. So for me, I've taken every single little piece of my jewelry and I've wrapped them individually or in small sets of two and three into tissue paper. That way they don't get tangled or scratched and they're easy to move and pack into a small box. And that box, of course, will be in my car because you always want to keep those valuables as close to you as possible. The other great little thing about putting your jewelry into tissue paper is when you move into your new home, it's like Christmas all over again. You get to unwrap all of your precious items. And to me, it's so much fun. Another great way to replace bubble wrap is to use some of your mix, mix match items that you would usually have thrown away. So while downsizing, you may notice that you've donated some of your clothes. Some of those clothes that I tend to donate may be mix max, mix match socks. That's a tongue twister. So what you could do is you could take those socks that don't match that you would either donate or throw away and you could put say your sunglasses in them which is what I did because my husband and I have a rather large sunglass collection and popping them into the socks keep them protected and just as safe as bubble wrap. You could also use them for small glasses or shot glasses that you may collect or any good stuff like that. And my last tip for you is to stay 
healthy. This is my own advice that I totally need to take because during this month of my move, because I'm moving in May and I'm right in the midst of moving and packing and doing all of that stuff to prepare for the move, I did allow myself to get sick. And of course, that's just a little bit of stress and a little bit of bad eating. And um, I thought I would share my experience with you in order to maybe help you to not have the same situation when you move. So my advice and staying healthy are a couple of things. The first thing you want to do is you want to try and avoid all of the fast food that you may find yourself falling into because you, one, don't want to stock up your fridge because I'm sure like most people moving, especially long distances, you want to empty out your fridge. So you don't want to make those big grocery hauls. And of course, the other thing is, is you're packing. The house is probably a little messy. You're exhausted and you don't want to cook. So one way to avoid eating out is to go to the market and find easy to make meals or ready-made meals at say your local Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. It's a great way to be able to eat right while handling a very hectic time in your life. The other thing is, is that while you're busy packing and handling phone calls and business items and all of these things that, you know, grownups have to do in order to move from one location to another, you find yourself stuck in the house and you may forget to do your normal routine, such as working out or even just going outside and getting fresh air. So for me, the best thing to do is to walk outside, even if it's a small 30 minute walk, do your normal routine as much as possible, especially if you work out and at least get some sort of fresh air and sunshine. Eating right, exercising and sunshine are going to help you during this hectic time and make sure that you stay healthy for your move. So those are my top five guys. I hope that at least one of these five steps have inspired you to look at your stressful move in a more positive light. So if you'd like to follow my journey across the country from California to North Carolina, you of course can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can totally click here and do that now if you haven't already. And then you can also follow me on twitter.com slash simply art underscore us. There, I'll be posting small 30 second videos of my cross country adventures. And on my YouTube channel, I'll be posting longer vlogs along the way. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you continue to follow my channel because it is still up and running, coming full force, just moving from California to North Carolina and I should be back up and running with full-fledged videos, including that crafting series I promised using your children's crafting supplies for adult projects at the end of May. And in the meantime, I'll give you little videos throughout my adventure. So thank you guys for watching. Cheers.